Hey, how are you? Today we're going to show you how to uh, recone the passive radiator. As you'll see, no magnet. It's a passive radiator out of a Klipsch. Uh, the part number is a KD-15, uh, also known as a KD-16 in some systems. And it's used in a few Klipsch models like the Chorus um, and the, um, the Forte and a pro model called a KP-480. There may be others that we're not aware of, but those are the ones that we kind of get called on frequently. And um, what happens is the cone gets brittle and it starts to crack out. So we need to replace this uh, cone uh, assembly in here. And we have a cone kit that, uh, that we sell for that. It comes with a new cone. Uh, new spider, dust cap, and gasket. Uh, there is a weight underneath this that we have to take out and reuse, and we'll show you that in the video. Uh, that goes back in with the new cone kit to provide the resonant frequency that Clips designed into this system for proper performance. So we'll get into that with you uh, as well uh, as we do the cleaning on this, and when we come back, we'll start the cleaning and show you how it's done. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start the cleaning process. We'll cut the cone assembly out. We'll remove the gasket. We'll remove the spider assembly from the back of the cone as well. And this is a pretty simple assembly here. Um, so really, in this case, all you need is a utility knife. You could use um, a chisel or something else if you'd like, but I prefer just to use a, a standard retractable utility knife on this. We'll kind of come in. The first thing we'll do is we'll start at the top of the frame. We'll cut the surround all the way out, just like this. And you'll see that kind of loosens everything up here. Next thing I like to do is cut the dust cap out. Sometimes they just kind of fall out. You'll see what happens here. We'll just set that aside and we'll throw that away later. This is the weight inside that I was talking about earlier. This is going to be removed and we're going to reuse this uh, when we do the repair. So the best thing to do here is just kind of break this old dry cone out of here like this. Sometimes you'll have to cut it out, but in most cases it's kind of rotted. So you just remove it and we'll throw it away. We don't need that anymore. We'll get rid of this dust cap as well, the old dust cap, as we're replacing that as part of the repair. And you'll see what you have left here. You have the spider, and then the weight, and then what's left of the rotted cone still attached to it. So what I'll do next is I'll come in here like this. We'll remove the gasket by just working underneath it with the blade. Just kind of slow and careful with that. All the way around couple of times you'll see how it starts to kind of free up there for you once you get through it. Just keep at it. it. Might take a few times to get around it. I like to come in here at this point and do a little vertical cut with the blade as well to help break any glue that's in the corner of the frame from the gasket. And if it's not loosened up you just kind of keep working it until it is. It'll take you a couple of minutes there. And she's coming along pretty nice now. So, there we go. Still a little tight there. There we go. You'll see how it lifts up. And we have the gasket off in one piece. We'll peel what's left of the surround off the back of it. Now, this gasket is kind of a, it's got a shiny vinyl coating on it that we like. So, when they're in good shape like this, I'll save them and we'll actually reuse this versus installing the new four piece gasket that comes in the kit. These to us just look a little bit nicer and they're just cosmetic. So it's kind of kind of cool to be able to keep this original and use this uh, as the as the replacement uh, when they're in good condition like this. So we'll set that aside and we'll just leave that there in the front of the uh, on the front of the bench until we're done. And you'll see that there's still some remnants of the surround on the frame. So that will come in with the blade. I'll kind of turn so the camera can see it here. Hopefully you can kind of get that. Kind of work this like this as best as you can. Take your time. <clears throat> if you want to use a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol or lacquer thinner, it might help soften the glue a little bit. But I just kind of dry scrape these like this until everything comes off. And you'll see that it starts to work off pretty easily here. Most of it's gone now. And I like to come in with the blade like this and just kind of run it along the inside of the frame to remove any extra residue that might be there. And that looks pretty good. But you can see there we've removed that all the way around. We'll do a little further cleanup on this um, 
off camera just to kind of get it prepared. But that gives you the gist of what we're doing there. Down in the, the center, we'll go ahead and cut the spider out. Just like this. Okay. And here's the weight. Again, we talked about that a little bit earlier. We're going to keep that. So we want to just break the cone assembly off of that. The spider will peel right off the back of this as well. And it's essentially, it's just a little, um, there's, a, there's a, a weight of metal in here that's kind of coated with epoxy. We're going to put that back into the new cone assembly when we do the repair, like this. Okay, so it's going to be like that once we reassemble everything. So we're going to save this. This part is very important, so don't, don't lose that. And you don't need to remove any other uh, material from this. That's perfect, just like that. So we'll leave that in place for later. And then we'll go ahead and clean up the rest of the frame by removing the spider. Just use your blade, kind of spin it on your work surface there. That's the majority of it. And then whatever residue is left, we just kind of work that down in with the tip of the blade. Like this. And I'll show you this once this is done. I'm going to kind of get in there and give you an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want to just get it smooth and remove all the residue so that you have a nice solid surface to glue to. The new spider fits right on top of the old location. So that's the majority of it. We'll work on the rest of this and we'll get the rest of this cleaned up and then when we come back uh, we'll have a clean work surface here for you and uh, we'll show you how to uh, set everything up. All right, we're back, and you'll see where we've gotten everything cleaned up on the frame of our Klipsch Passive here, uh, the KD-15 that we're working on for you, showing you how to install the reconing kit. And we have the cone assembly here, uh, the spider, and new dust cap as well. And we're going to reuse the gasket that we removed in the first step uh, that we spoke about earlier to you as well. The kit comes with new gaskets, but in this case, we'll just dispose of those, and, and you won't use those. Um, one thing of note here with the weight that we removed and the new spider is the new spider has got a little bit of a taller lip than the than the original so what happens is is we need to kind of trim that down a little bit to allow the weight to sit down closer to it when we put it together with the cone which we'll show you so the best way to do this is to um, take your utility knife with the sharp blade and come in and either just trim a little bit of that like this or what I prefer to do is to use a small pair of scissors like this and just come in here and trim a little bit right off the top of the spider. About half or so of the height is what you'll want to do there. Maybe just a little bit more. And you'll see I'm taking out eh, about an eighth of an inch or so. You'll have to kind of eyeball this. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you want to get something that looks like this, okay, and you've removed some of the neck there, and that's going to allow this weight to sit down in there and make gluing a lot easier when we put everything together. So we'll, we'll kind of show you a dry fit here. So we have the spider that goes in place first, like this, all right, then the cone sits in like this, and you'll can, you can kind of see where the spider shows right here, just a little bit of it. The weight is going to go in like this, flush kind of turn it and it'll press down. We're going to epoxy all of this back into place just like the original one there and when we glue everything up and let it set up we'll uh, we'll complete this and show you how that works Then, of course when it's all said and done the new dust cap will go in and the new gasket will go back on top. So that's kind of the process that little cutting part of the top of the spider is, is a little bit tricky so take your time with that and uh, let us know if you have any questions with it but it's pretty straightforward and you can kind of see what I've done there so when we come back we'll glue it all up and, uh, and we'll get it we'll get it rolling alright so we're back we're gonna glue everything up for you uh, on the clips passive and what I like to use for the glue for pretty much uh, all of it except for the center weight in the spider is we use the MI3035 uh, rubber based adhesive for this. We'll glue the spider in place with this. We'll glue the surround to the frame with the same glue and that's, uh, that's the best fastest drying glue that we have for that. So first thing we'll do is we'll just remove the tip of the glue like this. We'll place a bead of the adhesive right in place here. If you can see that or not but we'll, we'll kind of put it on there and then I'll show you what that looks like. You see I'm just kind of holding the glue steady and turning the speaker, uh, the passive 
uh, frame. Okay, so let's cap the glue. It's best to kind of just work neatly and slowly with that. You'll see there's a bead of adhesive right there, right around the center. So we'll set our spider in place like this, and we'll kind of just turn it a little bit and press it into place. And then you can use the tip of your finger or a coffee stir or any small flat object like this to kind of press this in place. So we'll just go ahead and give you a little idea of that. And I'll just use my fingertips to kind of get that set. All right. Keep a rag handy for that. Okay. And that's what it looks like. Okay. And just kind of eyeball center it. Get it as best you can. The old spider uh, line from the old adhesive is going to be there to kind of guide you. So that's fine. So we'll go ahead and apply a bead of adhesive there like that. Let that set in place. And it starts to dry up fairly quickly. You have an hour or so, somewhere in there, that you can still move it a little bit if you need to. So what I'll do next is we'll come in and we'll apply a bead of adhesive right to the frame. This. About an eighth of an inch is all you need. You don't have to go crazy with it. All right, one time around. Cap the glue. All right. Cone. Set it in place. Kind of spin it to set it, and you'll see the glue kind of pressing out around the edge of the of the cloths around here like this. So I'll just do a little pressure on that. You'll see the the neck of the spider right in the center, and that's what you want. Okay. So that's that's perfect. We'll let that sit up for just a few minutes. I'm going to put another bead of adhesive on the top of this to set the uh, the gasket in place. So we'll run one small bead right on the edge of the fabric surround like this. Okay, there you go. Cap the glue, set it aside, and we'll set the gasket in place. That'll kind of help hold the top of the cone assembly while we're working on installing the weight and the dust cap here in just a little bit. Press that down. What I like to do on this, <clears throat> once it kind of gets set in place, so I'll just hold this like this, flip it, and just let that set for about an hour. Then we'll come back, we'll do the, the weight in the center with the epoxy, and we'll set the dust cap. We'll treat the edge of the surround with our edge sealer, and we will be done. All right, we're back. We've let everything dry up here for a couple of hours um, for the gasket and the spider. And we still need to connect the weight, which will go inside here. When we're done with the weight, we'll put the dust cap on like this. And then when we're finished, we'll dress the edge with our edge sealer all the way around. And we'll have a completed repair on this Klipsch KD-15 Passive. So the first thing to do here is we like to use our uh, epoxy for... Um, for the uh, adding the weight and attaching the cone to the coil. So we'll take this out. It comes with two mixing nozzles, which makes it nice and easy to use. So we'll just remove this in the package. You'll see the mixing nozzles there. So you get two mixing nozzles and the epoxy with the plunger like this. So we'll set that aside for just a minute. We'll pop this top off of here like this. And then the mixing nozzle presses on and turns in place just like that. And then we're ready to go. It comes with a little cover so when you're done you can seal it back up if you want to save the tip for something else. So we'll get rid of the, that part. And then we'll come in we'll get this started. I like to start this on a scrap like this. You'll see it mixing right through the tube here. It mixes the hardener and the resin all together. Just let a little bit come out. There we go. Pull that plunger back like this. Okay. Now I come in here. And we'll run a little bead all the way around the neck. And hopefully the camera can kind of see that. Make sure you're working on top of something so if you drip a little bit, it doesn't hurt anything. There we go. We'll pull that plunger back and we'll just kind of save this off to the side. <clears throat> and you'll see what I've done here. I've run a bead all the way around there, just like that. The next thing I like to do is run a second bead just a little further up on the cone. 
Doesn't have to be perfect. Just in there like that, okay? You'll see it like that. Now I'll set the weight in place and kind of give it a little turn and a little press. It gets a little messy there, okay? Take your rag and kind of clean that off a little bit. Spin that and kind of seat it in place. And you'll see, I'll show you real quick on the bottom. We'll lift this up. You'll see what's going on there. The weight is back in place in the neck of the spider, just like the original, okay? <clears throat> wipe up any excess and then I like to come in and do a final fill with the epoxy all the way around like this filling anything left in the void there and it will just flow in place and self level to provide a nice clean finish okay do a couple of times like this and that should be good. Go ahead and pull this out of there and set that off to the side. We'll check our finish there again. And if you like, you can find something to kind of weight that down while that dries. The epoxy takes about 15 to 20 minutes to cure. Wipe off any excess, but that's kind of the look that you want right there, as you can kind of see. It's filled in all the way around, and that's perfect. All right. So we'll let that set up. Meanwhile, we can continue on um, with the repair. We'll put the dust cap in place like this. You can let it dry and come back and do it later. But for our purposes today, I'm going to go ahead and do this now. I'm going to set this in place and let this set up. So we'll just run a small bead. I don't know if you can see that there. Of the 3035 adhesive right around the edge of the dust cap. Just take your time with that. place. Kind of give it a little turn. I want that set into place like this. I'm going to let this set up now. Put a small weight on top of this if you'd like. Um, something like this. It's perfect. Anything that you have around the house that's uh, not too heavy to, to dent or damage the cap. I'll let this set up for about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll come back and we'll treat the edge and we'll be done. All right, we're back, and we've given it a couple of hours for the dust cap to dry, the epoxy um, that we put underneath to hold the cone to the spider, and the, the original weight that we put back in on the on the clips passive is, is dry as well. And you can see here we've got a nice finish on the back side. This is the original weight. You can see just a little bit of the epoxy exposed on this area here. Nice and tight. Everything's perfect. So this is what you want. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to edge treat um, the fabric because it's an untreated surround so we're going to use our edge sealer which is the 1291 edge sealer and then we use a small brush uh, like this to kind of apply it all the way around we'll show you how that's done we'll allow that to dry and then this is ready to be reinstalled into the cabinet for use so we'll go ahead and get that started now for you and what we want to do on this is just run a small bead you'll poke a hole right in the nozzle after you remove the red cap right here and then I like to just Again, hold the bottle in one hand and then spin the speaker underneath, just like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll use the brush to kind of spread it out and paint it in place and make a nice even finish with everything. So do a little bit of this like this here. There's three grooves in the fabric surround, so I'll run three beads of the sealer to start. We'll kind of recap that off. We can add some more a little bit later if we need to. I like to use a one inch or in this case a, a one inch uh, sash brush which kind of has an angle on it. You can use a straight brush as well. Just anything small and clean like this that you have around the house will work great. Go ahead and spin this underneath. And you can see I've pretty much run out of material so we're going to need some more sealer to be added. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, another bead kind of to the inside here, 
and allow the brush to kind of push that up and over the edge to meet the edge of the cone. I'll show you that here in a minute. Okay, so we'll bring the brush back out like this. Now we're getting a nice spread on it there. You can see that. Beautiful. All right. Okay, then I'll come in on the outside like this and we'll spin it the other way to spread the sealer evenly all the way around the surround like this. Okay, and that's pretty good. We'll run one more down the middle here. And allow this sealer to penetrate the fabric. That's your finished product. We'll allow this to dry for another hour or two. Once it's dry, it'll dry completely clear. It'll stay a little bit tacky. It'll have a little bit of gloss finish to it when it's done. And that will complete your repair of the Clips Passive for the KD-15 and KD-16 series products. All right, so we're back and we let uh, this edge sealant dry all the way around. Remember, it kind of goes on milky white. A couple hours later, this is the finished product. It dries clear, a little bit shiny, a little bit tacky, and that's normal. That's what you want there. So the passive radiator uh, is complete. You can see the weight on the back uh, that we installed from the old assembly uh, turned out very nicely here. And everything is ready to go, and this is uh, going back into the cabinet, and we'll be ready for, uh, for play here shortly. Thank you so much.